Welcome back to Allegheny Health Network Nightly Sports Call. I'm Rich Walsh with Paul Zeiss. We're talking about the Pens draft. Also, the Buckos are in St. Louis tonight. They're losing that game right now. All right, back out to the phone lines. We're going to go out to John in Banksville. What's up, John? Hi, guys. How are you doing tonight? Hey, thanks for calling. Uh, yeah, um, some comments about the trade and a question. Uh, I think it's a decent trade. JR said he wanted some, uh, some beef up there. Um, that was clear. We got uh, we, we we got hit pretty well in the playoffs, and when we hit somebody, we tended to uh, bounce off of them. Um, a thirtieth round draft pick is just a future pick for the future. It's sort of a crapshoot to see if a guy will make it or not. And Sunquist, the games he did play with us during the regular season, he was the slowest sweet I ever uh, I, I ever saw, and uh, I don't think he was gonna. Um, live up to what they thought he was going to be. So, on the whole, I think it's a decent trade. The guy will be a third or fourth line center, hit people, and maybe go in there if somebody's messing with Crosby or whatever. And so I think it's a decent trade. And my question is this. Um, regarding these uh, Kessel rumors, uh, have you guys heard specific uh, uh, talk from uh, legitimate people? Or do you think it's one of these made-up uh, Hockey traits that some sports writer out there likes to put on tr Twitter for fun, and uh, there's nothing to it. So hang up hey, and listen to your John, remarks. I appreciate it. Hey, I always say where there's smoke, there's fire. Um, I haven't seen anything legitimate yet, Paul, on the Kessel trades. Well, I, I mean, I'll say this. I mean, to, you know, Ron Cook today was talking about it on his show, and basically he's talking about he, you know, has he, he had talked to some people within the organization and stuff, and that's basically what they're all saying. So. You know, I, he's a guy that's been in this business 30 years. Yeah. And the thing about Ron Cook is he, he's not going to – he's not a hot takes no, guy. He he's isn't. not a rumor guy. He doesn't even like – he doesn't even barely use his, you know, Twitter or anything. That's not him. Yeah. So if he's saying it, that tells me that there's legitimacy. You know, it's legitimate. Now, the thing about it is it doesn't mean it's going to happen. It just means that that's what they're trying to do is say, hey, you know, if we can find the right deal – this is a guy we'd like to offload because of his contract and because apparently, you know, he drives Mike Sullivan crazy at times. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, that's, you know, it's just the reality. Yeah, if it's coming from Ron Cook, I don't think it's just a rumor. I mean, he, he, he's connected, he's been around and well-respected, and, and like you said, he's not a hot take kind of guy. Um, but, you know, as for Oscar Sundquist, I think it just, you know, they've kind of given up on him. I think it's just kind of throwing it away here. Uh, I mean, Gensel passed him. Josh Archibald passed him. Carter Rowney was ahead of him. They all came up uh, this year over him. And there weren't any plans of, of him playing this postseason. So maybe they, they have given up on him. And that's just kind of like, we'll give you this guy. We need this guy for the regular season. And we're dropping 20 spots. And that, I think maybe that's the biggest loss in this whole thing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, I mean, that's, I don't think, here's the thing. I don't think they gave up a ton for this. No. So if I mean, it doesn't work out, it's not like But it's the downside is Reeves only plays eight, nine minutes a game. Uh, he takes too many penalties. Yeah, he never again, scores. What did they really, in the end, what did yeah. they really give up? They didn't give up an all-star. 20 spots I'll tell you that. in the draft. That's it, basically. And, and, uh, and, and a, a prospect that, that was, might never play. Yeah, exactly. All right, back out to the phone lines. Let's go out to Aaron in Windber. Aaron, what's up? Hey guys, I hate talking about you know getting the enforcer. You don't have to trade and stuff like that. But I remember back in the Ottawa series. Yeah, you got to turn your you know, TV down. In the Ottawa series, you know, oh, because he's getting getting beat up, getting beat up, and maybe we need an enforcer. They have but that guy, Tom Sestito, right? Now you don't like it. They have that guy yeah. on their roster, basically. Isn't Tom Sestito kind of this guy? I mean, but they're not going to play these guy, guys in the postseason. This guy's a better though. player than Tom Sestito. I never once said they needed an enforcer. Never once. I, I would say I, 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 I've, I've always said it, this is a team that's not built to have an enforcer. Yeah. They, they're built to skate, be fast, you know, skate circles around guys, use their speed, and that's how they play. And that's how they play for four lines. And, you know, they basically wear teams down because for four lines – they're sending this relentless pressure and speed at you, and all of a sudden, you know, it doesn't matter who's out there. Sooner or later, the other team breaks, it's and that's where you score goals. Having an enforcer, to me, in the playoffs is almost useless. Now, I will say he's, he's a, this guy's a little better player than Sestito is. I mean, Sestito is just straight yeah. a, a fighter. I mean, he's useless as a player. Um, 
maybe there's some value here if you put away your. Well, they know on. more than us, so I mean, again, he's out of this Jim, guy. But but yeah. again, here's the, here's why there shouldn't be any outrage. They didn't really give up that much. No, they didn't. This isn't like they traded some real key component. You know what I mean? To get, I mean, they 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 went 20 spots in the draft and a guy they probably have already given up on. Unlike the NFL, these guys you don't see for four, five, six years if you're lucky, unless you're in the top. Five, maybe you'll right. see these guys come up. Uh, a guy picked at 31, you might not see him for four or five years. So I don't think it's big dropping back 20 spots because you might get the same player that you liked at 30 that you might get at 50. And um, but but I do agree with what we started the show with that you won't see a guy like Reeves playing a lot in the postseason. And I don't know why you would play even if you're getting beat up in the Ottawa series. I mean that's their game in. You, you can't really have an enforcer on the ice and take penalties and give, um, give them an advantage, a, a power play. Yeah. So, you know, the, the Penguins again, are like, you're the, not gonna like out- the Rocky. Right. They, they just keep taking a beating. You know what Columbus figured out too late in the series? Is that if you're going to, if you're, if you're planning to beat the Penguins, is it just, uh, just to try and hit them or knock them around and all that stuff? You're going to lose. Yeah, and that's how you all gotta play hockey. Lost. You got to play hockey against them. Definitely. And to me, that's why it just doesn't fit. Now, it's one guy, so it's not that big of a deal. But I'll be shocked if he plays a lot in the playoffs. All right, let's go out to Mike and Breezewood. How you doing, Mike? Good evening. Uh, Polanco, everybody, all the talk's going to be the two great catches, but they need to look at focus on what he did running the bases. He uh, jogged the first base when he could have possibly beat that out. And also, the Pirates need to uh, get some tape of the, the Cardinals' button and show that to their players and use that as a teaching tool because they sure as hell can't bunt. You know what? Polanco is one of the worst outfielders that ever played for the Pirates organization. Uh, <laughs> let, me, let me just tell you something. <laughs> Why do they need the bunt? And that's I another. mean, here, here's the thing. You know, Polanco is responsible for my blood pressure going way yeah. up last night after the game last night. Um, and to, I mean, even today on my show, I'm talking about on, on – uh, uh, my show on the radio. Because your blood pressure never goes up he, on yeah. the show. Well, here's the thing. He is the most frustrating player that I can think of in Pittsburgh sports in the last 10, 15 years. Isn't he? Uh, off the top of my head. I, I mean, mean sure you know, I there, there's, there's some guys, I'm sure, you know, like, uh, um, you know. Now, I could think of, like, Sammy Coates is pretty frustrating. Coates has been frustrating. But the thing about yeah. it is, Coates was a guy that they drafted that they kind of knew was a project. I mean, Polanco was supposed to be the truth. Yeah. He's supposed this to be guy next. was supposed to be a five-toll player, you know, who is, you know, power and average and great speed. And, you know, because he's got this wonderful arm. You know, yesterday, that ridiculous play where he threw it into home and, and, and the guy that, from the Brewers decided to stop running and they threw it out to third base and, and he was out, mm-hmm. even though he, he knocked in the winning run. You know, that was Polanco's first assist this season. We're, what, 80 games into the thing, 78 games? That was his first assist. Mr., you know, five-toll player with the greatest arm that's ever been put on an outfielder. First assist. Starley Marte led the league in assists. Batting year, third. Right? What? Batting third. 200 out of 206 at-bats. Batting third. He has 18 RBI. And he's batting. Please don't, he's please batting, don't get me started on he's him. He's batting 180 this month. He's so frustrating because it looks like he, you know, he looks the part. He and does. he just so far hasn't been the part. And he's, you could tell, I mean, he looks like he could play linebacker for the Steelers. Uh, He's a big dude. He is frustrating. Yeah, I'm going to have to think about that. That's a good question, Paul. All right, we're going to take a break. Back with more of your phone calls coming up next day right there.